So Neil, it's great being back uh, over here at uh, your headquarters of Park Fairwinds. Uh, thanks for visiting. Uh, we've been here about uh, a year ago, uh, mm -hmm. just at the start of, uh, of the expedition. Can you, for people who don't, who don't know what Park Fairwinds is, so what is it? Uh, basically, we are an airport car sharing uh, um, platform. So when you travel, you can uh, park your car for free with us. Um, during the time that you're away, we rent out your car to other travelers that are coming into the same airport. And when you return, we have your car uh, clean. And uh, we also share the proceeds of the uh, rental period. Okay, cool. So it's, it's really a, uh, a best of both worlds for everyone uh, uh, joining the program. Yeah. You also got two target groups, the people mm -hmm. who are owning the car and going on holidays or are on business and people who are renting the car there. Yeah. You, your approach is also uh, really different uh, from these target groups. Yeah, yeah, we noticed that they're uh, both uh, geographically quite uh, diverse in the sense that all of our parkers are uh, Dutch people basically that are uh, leaving from uh, Amsterdam airport. And the rest is the entire world basically that's arriving at Amsterdam airport and needs to rent a car. And we really do notice that the people that are parking their car are uh, the ones that have most of the sharing concept in that sense. And people that are renting the car see us as something that's fairly comparable to uh, Hertz or Butch and Aravis, but better prices, better service and a bit more social and green. So that's kind of, yeah, it's two very different markets with very different marketing approaches as well. Yeah, and also your model makes it also that it, that it, that it, that it, it isn't really a peer-to-peer -peer model, it's more a peer-to-business-to-peer -to -peer model. Yes, that's what uh, we like to call ourselves indeed. <laughs> yeah, uh, we really do feel that um, we're all about creating the maximum uh, value for uh, our users in the sense that a lot of um, the critiques on the sharing economy has been, uh, so what's the added value of the platform? And for us, we uh, physically clean cars, we bring people to the airport, we pick them up, we check cars for uh, their um, yeah, state of maintenance, uh, safety issues. Uh, we screen renters, so we know that we're uh, absolutely certain that we only rent out cars to people that will treat them uh, with the uh, proper, uh, yeah, uh, that we use them properly. So we really try to add as much value as possible. Yeah, and I think that that's well also really makes it different from other sharing economy platforms because mm -hmm. <coughs> with many sharing economy platforms, the the the, the, the transaction is really local for people mm -hmm. in the neighborhoods and for yeah. you, uh, especially for for people who are visiting Schiphol or Netherlands, it's it's a different uh, different uh, di a different approach. Mm -hmm. So and uh, well, it, it, like I told before, we we uh, we met a year ago. We had an interview. It's, it's also uh, uh, on a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, but what happened the last year? I think I think a lot. Yeah, actually quite a lot. So I think last year we were still in our office uh, downstairs, uh, so we moved offices in the meantime. Um, we've been operational for almost a year and a half now at uh, Amsterdam Airport. And it's been a very uh, tumultuous year in the sense that we've grown to a team of seven people by now. Uh, we have a very large uh, user base uh, growth month over month. So that's something we're very proud of. We noticed that uh, we're getting very loyal uh, customers as well, both the parkers and the renters. Um, yeah, we have a fair number of users that actually have parked with us more than five times by now, which I didn't expect since most people don't travel that many times through one airport. So that's good to see. Um, we've had a lot of press. Uh, and we've attracted a, uh, yeah, uh, a somewhat larger investor than the investors that we attracted in the first round. Uh, the SIM Investment Group just announced uh, that they're uh, uh, now uh, one of our shareholders. So we're very proud of that and we're looking forward to uh, expanding our business internationally uh, to get to yeah, basically our uh, big goal to be uh, the uh, market leader in European car, uh, car sharing and airports. So okay, that's that's what we're in for. It sounds like a really a smooth track, but I guess there are quite some assumptions that um, were completely different than, than, than what you made. Oh, so, so what are your yeah. what are your biggest uh, lessons learned uh, the, the past year? Um, well, we've had a lot of um, learning experiences as well, or failures, as you would call them, um, where we we do things according to the lean startup method. So we're we're constantly testing a lot, and we're noticing a lot of things uh, work and a lot of things don't work. And like for instance, behind you are uh, posters that were at uh, gas stations uh, over the past few weeks. We're noticing that really isn't attracting the kind of uh, volume that we were hoping for. 
So that's something that costs us a bit more money than it made us. And uh, other collaborations, uh, for instance, with the uh, tour operators of the A&WB. Um, yeah, those are the kind of uh, collaborations that we're really looking forward to get to volume. Um, we we haven't made any huge pivots or anything. We, we pretty much figured out uh, during our uh, beta testing phase what works and what doesn't work. Uh, we still have the, the same uh, profit sharing. We still have the same... Uh, yeah, the same uh, vehicle classes and we're just fine-tuning a lot. So we're learning about uh, the pricing strategies used by our competitors. We're learning how to adapt to that and we're learning something quite interesting. Uh, the funny thing is that we don't need to be like uh, half the price of our competitors. We just need to be uh, one euro cheaper than the cheapest guy on the airport. So that's all we need to do. And it's, it's quite interesting to see that uh, the market is very competitive and there are huge multi-billion dollar companies out there that everyone knows, but we're still able to compete with them fairly easily because uh, knowing those companies doesn't mean that you are likely to be a loyal customer. So we feel that we treat our uh, customers uh, as they would like to be treated uh, and as we ourselves would like to be treated when renting a car. And that's really uh, translating into loyalty, which is a rare thing in the, uh, in the uh, airport car rental business. Yeah, that's, uh, and, and, and you're also really <coughs> connecting two worlds, uh, uh, especially also because when you look at renting the cars that you have over mm -hmm. here, uh, that's quite a traditional model. Yeah, so you're really also competing uh, with, with existing uh, uh, rental organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, looking to the uh, supply of the platform, it's also uh, a yeah, you really ha also ha have to change the, the mindsets and, and the habits of people. Yeah. Uh, which one of uh, uh, which of both do you think are, are, are the most interesting to to to, uh, to um, challenge? Well, truth be told, <coughs> finding our renters has not been a very challenging um, ordeal. It's it's pretty much gone smoothly uh, from the get go. Um, we're at occupancy rates of over seventy percent. Uh, yeah, we've been there for over a year, basically, even and during and the slow and months. And what's the average uh, industry standard? Uh, the industry standard uh, depends on whether you're... Uh, for all airport car rental uh, companies would be roughly about the same, like in the low 70s. So we are already achieving the same level of efficiency as uh, the guys like Budget and Hertz and Avis. So we're very proud of that, because that is uh, quite an achievement for a tiny little company with no mm. marketing budget or well, some marketing budget, but not uh, the Different. kind of marketing <laughs> budget they would have. So that, that's awesome to be able to compete with, with those big guys. So really the, the challenge for us is, is, is getting the parkers. It's really, um, it's, it's not that big of a stretch to uh, rent a car uh, that's owned by a private person rather than owned by a, a car rental company. But it is a bigger stretch to uh, park your car somewhere where you know your car will be rented out during the time it's parked. So, like most sharing platforms, it's the supply side that's uh, that's more challenging. And we we deploy a, a wide variety of uh, of marketing tools to get there. But the most important bit is that uh, other people talk positively about us. So uh, we can say it's all safe, it's all insured, uh, every single thing that could possibly happen, we thought of it and we have a solution for it. But that's not the same as um, one of our users, for instance. Um, we have a video interview on our site with uh, the very first user that ever had uh, damage through the Parkland platform. So he had a scratch on his door and he tells uh, the camera how uh, we handled it and uh, how he's still a customer even though uh, there was damage to his car and how that was something that didn't uh, bother him at all because we uh, um, communicated clearly and we sold it for him. So those things are, are priceless and they really help other people to trust us with their uh, car keys. So that's the lesson we're learning and we're learning to partner with the big companies that uh, already have uh, consumer trust uh, so that we can get there quicker. Okay, and you're also working out together with uh, big organizations because there are, we're talking about waste, <coughs> there are, are many uh, cars standing still at, at, at yeah. corporates and at leasing companies, so you also yeah. uh, made some uh, uh, connections with them? Yeah, by now uh, about 25% of the uh, leasing cars in the Netherlands uh, are allowed onto our system, so there's no longer any uh, uh, barriers from the leasing companies, and we expect that to rise to over 50% this year basically. 
So those are big steps. And now the next big step is to actually inform all those people driving those leasing cars that they can park with us and why they should. So that's the next step we're taking. We're trying to partner with uh, the big employers in the Netherlands uh, so that they uh, can reap the benefits as well by uh, reducing their parking costs to zero and to allow their employees to uh, park for free during their holidays as well. It's, it's a combination of, 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 of informing them, but also by changing behavior because mm -hmm. I, I don't think informing them will, will, will mm -hmm. do the trick. So uh, what's your strategy like uh, when, I, when I have a bit corp, so I'm the chief uh, of, uh, of uh, Heineken, mm -hmm. just a random mm -hmm. brand that I, uh, I like, and this also suits mm -hmm. the color of your uh, dopper uh, <coughs> water bottle. <laughs> um, in what way uh, ca can you uh, change the behavior of my employees or can you help me to change so they will uh, uh, start using your service with the company mm -hmm. cars and then yeah. uh, um, having a uh, free parking cost but also yeah, uh, contributes to their environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I would tell you that uh, if you were to use the Parkfly Rent system, your employees would always get a clean car when they return from a business trip. Uh, they will get a private driver that picks them up at the airport and uh, drops them off before their flight. Uh, and their cars would, uh, would be parked for free. And those same employees could also park their own cars for free uh, when they go on holiday. So those are a lot of pluses. And um, we also really uh, uh, figured out the way to, to deal with anything that might happen with a car without it uh, being obtrusive to uh, Heineken as a company, for instance. So if there are fines, we can handle it. If there da there's damage, we can handle it. So we've uh, yeah pretty much uh, cut that corner. Yeah, but that, that's, that's the, 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 the basic trust, uh, like, mm -hmm. like you also described uh, yeah. with the other users. Uh, but I'm really curious about how uh, because yeah, it's 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 really about <coughs> changing the habits of people. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and that's also something you have to learn in time. It's, it's, uh, yeah. I, I don't think you have a clear answer on that right now because it's also you need some experience uh, mm -hmm. with uh, with that. And um, <coughs> in the start, uh, there were also some some yeah uh, bigger competitors uh, watching you about hey who are these guys? What they're doing? Mm -hmm. uh, are they still uh, watching you? And 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 do you also uh, see this in daily practice? Mm. Well, I think it's slowly getting to the point where they're starting to accept uh, that Parkfly is here to stay, and um, they're starting to re-examine like so. So, what should we think about this? Because uh, I think a lot of the the big players in the market, be it uh, airports or be it other car rental companies or be it uh, uh, parking companies, for instance, were um, a bit standoffish in the sense that they were kind of like, I don't know what this company is doing, I don't know if it's good for me, and uh, I don't know if I want to work with that. And slowly but surely we're getting more uh, tour operators, rental companies, uh, airports to, to talk with us and to uh, get to a point where we can uh, actually work with them actively, because we, we do love to cooperate, it's always okay. good. And I think they're also underestimating uh, the potential of it, so this is maybe why they're still so nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I think there are a lot of things that are going to change. And uh, one of the big things that's going to change is that it's not always about um, getting uh, consumers to pay as much as possible. It's uh, sometimes it's about raising the level of service to the highest possible level. And sometimes it's about accepting that it doesn't uh, immediately yield the highest profit. But in the long term, it will uh, mean that people choose for an airport where it's pleasant to park and where it's pleasant to rent a car, even though that might reduce the, uh, the rental proceeds or the parking proceeds. So I think there are a lot of uh, motions in the market that, um, that change. And I think CSR is becoming more and more of an important motivator, not just something to put on your website, but something to actually guide your uh, decisions. So I think that also really fits well into what we do. Yeah, and I think it also really fits well in you as a person because you also mm -hmm. shared uh, the first time we met that you have a background in hospitality and there mm -hmm. was some missing thing in yeah. the car rental uh, industry. So yeah. that's, that, that's the way you can also yeah, uh, yeah. make a good thing about that. Yeah, well, I think the, the car rental industry, especially after like the start of the crisis, you, you really noticed that the <coughs> rental prices were just plummeting. And it uh, just undercut the profits of the car rental uh, companies. And they were um, a bit directionless about how to deal with that. And I think a lot of them have chosen to get to the point where you start um, coercing your customers to pay more than they would like for products they don't really want. 
uh, I don't think that's the right way to go. That's kind of where the loyalty went as well. So as soon as you start having to pay like 14 euros a day for a, a GPS uh, a system that only costs 100 euros, or for a, a baby seat, for instance, or if you start telling people, yes, you have insurance, but you also need insurance for your tires and for your undercarriage, and of course your windshield is not, not protected, it gets to the point where people start disliking you. And I think that's kind of the, um, the scene where Parkfly Rent started, renting cars. Um, we've decided to be a lot more open about our product and a lot fairer in our prices, which does mean that we don't optimize the, um, yeah, the rental proceeds from every single uh, customer. But in the end, we do get them back the next time. So that's valuable as well. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and, and you just also shared that you uh, now have another big investor in, in the company. Yeah, you, were, yeah. You, you already had some investors in the company. True. So yeah. how did that went? Um, well, basically, we started uh, with a beta testing phase, which I financed myself. And after that, we needed some serious financing. So we attracted a few uh, angel investors. And by now we're getting to the point where we, uh, we want to be able to expand internationally and to, to get our IT onto a higher platform. Um, and in order to do that, we need some more uh, serious resources and we need some, uh, a partner with more connections within uh, the European market so that we can get there quicker. So um, we, we looked around and we saw uh, the SIM, uh, which had already actively partnered with the, the sharing economy, launched its own website, uh, uh, the Verenigingseconomie.nl, uh, uh, which is basically about the sharing economy, about the, yeah, basically uh, the collaborative economy more in a sense. And they really invest from um, a philosophy that there are uh, larger forces at play in society today and they're trying to get ahead of uh, movements that will change society over the, power, over the next few decades. And one of the things they see as uh, yeah, one of the groundbreaking uh, movements for the next few, uh, few years is the sharing economy. So we're the first company so far that they've, uh, yeah, they've partnered with um, for the sharing economy, uh, but we probably won't be the last ones. So for us, it's a very valuable partner to uh, to have on board, and they're already providing a lot of value for us. Cool. And <coughs> and um, at what way do they, uh, do they provide value for you? So of course, uh, because of the money, but uh, mm -hmm. there's more, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, well, basically, they're very active as advisors as well. So they're they're helping us to rewrite a business plan to fine tune some of our uh, business model uh, and to to formulate a good strategy on where to go next and how to get there uh, over the next few years. So. Yeah, that's already quite actively uh, helping us to get to that point. And also they have a huge network uh, throughout Europe with uh, the larger corporations out there. So that for us is a good uh, entryway into the, the B2B market as well. Okay, cool. And, and, and uh, when we had our first interview a year ago, <coughs> we were talking about IT because mm. you are not doing the IT yourself. Yeah. And, and some, some of the experts in the expert team, they had some doubts about, okay, mm -hmm. but you're also a, an IT company. So mm -hmm. why did you do your IT? And you said, no, we're not an IT company. So mm -hmm. we're now a year further. Uh, do you still are happy with outsourcing your IT? Yeah. Well, we work with uh, the Movements Group, which is a medium-sized IT company uh, that is quite entrepreneurial themselves as well. So they really actively work with us to get us to, to get the scale as well. So that's in their interest as well. Uh, we noticed that they have allowed us to uh, iterate three times on our IT platform so far. So this is the third version already, and it's getting better with each single version. So we were able to uh, get a, a, a very uh, professional IT platform, which does a lot of the things that we needed to do uh, for a relatively low investment. So I think it has been a wise choice so far, and especially because it has allowed uh, us to focus on the operational side of things. So this is a fairly complex company with a long, long opening hours from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, so that means a lot of things need to be managed uh, yeah, on a daily basis and IT is not one of them. So that really, um, really helps, uh, helps us to keep the focus. Yeah, but IT is the first contact with your customer. 
It is, but we uh, we do have the, the necessary control over it. So um, I'll, I'll give you an example, like uh, the um, uh, the development of the actual platform behind it, and the development of the uh, the HTML5 uh, coding for this side is done by movements. But everything that's related to the message comes directly from us. So um, we can directly change that on the website without movements having to uh, be involved in that. And we also do A-B testing um, ourselves. So we work with uh, Visual Website Optimizer, for instance, to uh, help us test every possible um, yeah, uh, tagline or color setting or uh, location or just a tiny arrow that points towards the button where you want them to click. And that really helps us so we can move faster and not have IT cost every single time we need something changed. So, yeah, I figure it's a good combination of having uh, a very knowledgeable partner uh, when you need them, but being able to uh, move quickly and do it yourself when you want to. Yeah, and, and uh, because I've talked to quite some, some other mm -hmm. platform owners and yeah. the, the, the ones who, who did start with an, with an external company, they said, okay, after a year, okay, we're going to do it ourselves. So, so, so mm -hmm. what are your, 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 your main uh, success factors in building a <coughs> long-term relationship with your IT uh, uh, partner, because I think um, they're, they're quite some startups having much trouble with that, and in the end they mm -hmm. say, okay, screw it, we're going to build yeah. it uh, ourselves. Well, I think it really is about uh, can you find the right, uh, the right company to work with, just as much as it is about can you find the right uh, IT guy to hire. And that is a very difficult process, and it's hard to select the right companies, especially if it's not your expertise, uh, your area of expertise. Um, so maybe in part we've been uh, lucky to get in touch with uh, a very entrepreneurial IT party, uh, which has helped us a lot. But on the other end, we've also worked very hard at that uh, relationship. And we've uh, been able to uh, make them see that we are a company that right now isn't good for uh, a huge marketing uh, or IT budget, uh, but will be in the future. So we're really co-investing in this platform as well. Yeah, so they really believe in the potential of your concept. Yeah. And which yeah. say, okay, by outsourcing, outsourcing doesn't mean, okay, outsourcing, I pay you money, so good luck, and, and uh, mm -hmm. let, show me when it's ready. Yeah. But are really having a really tight relationship uh, yeah. on the process. Yeah, that means that sometimes uh, we, we really do cooperate them and look like uh, if it's something that we can do, we'll do it ourselves instead of just asking them for every tiny little change. And sometimes we can change stuff ourselves and we figure it out and we do it ourselves and we save them a bit of uh, work on it. So, yeah, it's, it's about being actively uh, cooperative with each other so you can keep costs low and at the same time get a high quality product. Okay, cool. And, and, and when you look at yourself as a person, um, mm -hmm. as, a, as an entrepreneur, as a leader, mm -hmm. um, where will you be in, let's say, five years? Because the company is growing. Uh, you already yeah. told me that you're looking to, to open a new location is in different countries, uh, mm -hmm. so it's going to happen. So there's going to happen a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your path? Um, well, I believe that a, a, a company's leader should uh, be uh, serviceable to the company. It shouldn't be about uh, where I want to go. It should be about what facilitates facilitates the growth of the company best. And it's actually a question that I am asking myself at the moment. Um, will I be? Uh, most of service to Parkfly Rent in a role where I'm um, basically at the head office and, and doing more the, the background um, uh, work or will I be more useful on the front lines and starting up new locations and, and moving from place to place to get to, uh, yeah, uh, to operational excellence. So I haven't figured it out yet. Uh, I guess it's good uh, that we're getting more people into the company and more people that can uh, tell me as well uh, that basically I'm not as good as, as something as I think I, I am. Because it is, uh, it's not good for a company to, to uh, be too reliant on the opinion of one person. Yeah, but in the end I think you also uh, had some co make some hurry with, with, with it, that uh, decision because in the end, mm -hmm. uh, depending on which role you are mm -hmm. choosing, you have to find somebody else who is filling the gaps. Yeah, 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 and actually, maybe that will be the the deciding factor. Maybe uh, it will be about uh, if I can find someone who is just brilliant with uh, 
uh, getting a back office going, for instance, and uh, getting pricing and reservations and everything online, and just uh, a, a whiz kit with online marketing, for instance, then maybe that will automatically shift me towards a position where I'm doing more operational, uh, real startup stuff with the new locations. Yeah. And maybe I'll find someone who's just brilliant at every single language and, and just uh, fits in everywhere and just uh, opens up locations uh, with ease and gets the exact right um, yeah, uh, temper into the team. Yeah, so yeah. yeah interesting thought. <laughs> but yeah. I think it's best <laughs> to, to make the decision yourself and not, mm -hmm. not, not to wait for the coincidence of, 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 mm -hmm. of who is going to, to cross your path. And, mm -hmm. and, and <coughs> what can we expect from you or, or, or from partner uh, the, the next next year? So what's going to happen? Um, well, we are actively looking into opening our first uh, um, location abroad. So that's something that uh, we hope to be able to announce uh, quickly where it will be and when it will be. How quickly? Um, not this year, but early next year. So that's, that's uh, the main timeline we're looking at now. And um, I think we'll mainly be doing a lot of IT stuff that's not so much visible on the front end. So we're trying to automate more of the things that we're currently already doing. Um, and yeah, we're basically trying to get to the point where people can park their car at Amsterdam Airport, for instance, and then uh, get off a plane at any other uh, major city in Europe and just say, hey, park fly rent uh, Barcelona, for instance, uh, have you got a car for me? Uh, we're trying to, trying to close the loop, basically. Yeah, cool. Okay. So I wish you good luck with that and thank you for your for your time.